How you going? Just going to take a few minutes to discuss the recent release of Fallout, the Amazon Prime TV show. We'll be avoiding spoilers, but I'll put a spoiler section at the end and make it super obvious so you can avoid them. It'll just be spoilers for the specific things we were speculating on before the Fallout show was released, like, is X thing in the show? I'll also be doing an episode per week deep dive over the next eight weeks, so make sure you've subscribed to my channel to follow along. Let's take 20 seconds for a quick rundown of my history with Fallout. I've played all the games that were released, besides Brotherhood of Steel because I've never owned an Xbox nor a PlayStation. PC Master Race, baby. I've played Fallout 1, 2, Tactics, 3 in expansions, New Vegas in expansions, 4 in expansions, 76, Shelter. I've not read any books, nor played any pen and paper or board games. I'm not a law master. I don't know what date the bombs fell, and I don't really care. I play Fallout games for the adventure and the what's behind that door style of gameplay. I don't do speedrunning. Now that that's out of the way, let's discuss the Fallout TV show itself. It was good. It's eight episodes each around an hour long, probably 50 minutes once you account for credits and previously ons. I watched it over two days, four episodes per day. My gut instinct is to give it a 7 out of 10. I would say I enjoyed myself, but I wasn't enthralled. Unlike with Shogun, you should watch that. I would only recommend Fallout to players of the games, maybe to gamers in general. I don't think I'm going to recommend this to my mum or my sisters. I feel like the show doesn't do a very good job of setting up the scenario. I don't think people unfamiliar with the game are going to understand that the opening scenes are set in 2077 and not the 1950s. Probably not helped by the constant references to commies. As I had feared, the Chinese are off the hook throughout the entire Fallout TV show. I don't believe they get mentioned once. Even the Yao Guai scene in the trailers is referred to as a bear. A couple of things have changed that on the surface seem minor, but are going to have Lawmaster's heads exploding. The change to the cause of the bombing, the change to how ghouls work, even the operation of the vaults is something new that we've never seen before. I'm still confused with the vault setup. It's not your typical one way in, one way out scenario. In fact, it's hinted that there may be vault designs that we've never dreamed of. One thing I think is indisputable is the sets, costumes, and props are all top-notch. And this feeds into my biggest fear of the Fallout show, that it ends up being a series of member berries. I remember Power Armor. I remember Sugar Bomb Cereal. I remember Nuka-Cola. Let's talk characters. We all know the three main ones. Lucy from The Vault, Maximus from The Brotherhood, and the ghoul from present day, I guess. Lucy plays the, oh shucks, butter wouldn't melt in her mouth kind of sheltered vault dweller pretty well. I can't fault the acting. The issue comes with the writing. They try to make her catchphrase, okie dokie, but it only really shows up intermittently. I can only remember it three or four times. It's not gonna happen. There's a weird sexuality going on in the vaults. Almost a workman-like, you gotta do what you gotta do attitude that might get a little too permissive. I mean, later on we get a kiss or two and it kind of pales into comparison with what is discussed earlier. Imagine dating a dominatrix and on the fifth date she lets you hold her hand. Maximus is an aspirant in the Brotherhood who's promoted to squire the minute we meet him. I found this actor to be very wooden. At some point he gets into a suit of power armor and there's a Tony Stark slash Iron Man kind of facial point of view shot with dials overlaid. He's meant to be reacting and emoting to the things that are happening around him, but it's very subdued, almost to the point of non-existence. This character is completely unlikable. The show tries to justify his actions, but he commits such unlikable acts that it's almost unbelievable when he is promised a reward for his actions. The ghoul is the most interesting character in the show. Maybe because we actually get a backstory with him? We see him come to the realisation that things are not as they seem. He probably lives the most normal life of all the main trio, as normal as being a war veteran and a movie star can be. We get to see what he values, we get to see his loyalty on display, 
and when it's not rewarded, we understand the action he takes. The supporting cast is mostly fine. Lucy's brother is supposed to be younger than her, but he looks like he's in his 40s. It's weird because he's played as the typical dweeb. He even plays uh, video games, but it's not really addressed in any meaningful way. Zach Cherry from Severance plays pretty much the same character. He has me puzzled because I would have thought it odd to have a fat vault dweller. Like surely the food would be rationed. There's a character that I won't name that had me thinking of Johnny Depp from Pirates of the Caribbean. Chris Parnell is actually bearable as the cycloptic vault overseer from the trailers. Which reminds me, comedy. Oh boy, the first four episodes I was rolling my eyes at some of the jokes. And not because they were corny puns, but because they just weren't funny. I did notice a few heavier breaths leaving my nostrils during the second half of the season. But I think this kind of kills any sense of despair or gravity to the situation when it's immediately followed by a joke. Fallout games had comedy, yes, but it wasn't during the climactic final quest. The major plot points in the games are played straight and the wacky zany comedy is in the side quests or in the situations found throughout the normal lives of everyday citizens. This felt a bit marvelish, and I think they took inspiration from movies like Guardians of the Galaxy and Thor Love and Thunder with the silliness pervading serious moments. There's one character that seems to be out of time. I don't know if they explained it, but this character should be long dead. Or they're a bit of a hypocrite. I didn't like the squire with the mustache. He felt a little too much like millennial humor for me. You know the type, the, oh, that just happened crowd. When the show slowed down, took its time, introduced a concept and how this world has a twisted version of that concept, Fallout was its most enjoyable. It wasn't exactly thrilling during battles and chases. The main villain of the show seems to want to be man. Our greed, our hubris, our distrust of the outsiders. Yet, in the story, villains all seem to be wishy-washy, oh, we're just misunderstood types of deals. The final episode raised more questions than answers with me and is obviously massive sequel bait. In the end, I found myself just not caring. I didn't form enough of an attachment with any of the characters beyond the physical. Were they sexy? Were they cool looking? They all had pretty weak motivations. I don't think a single one actually had their main quest satisfied. Lucy's quest isn't over. Maximus has kind of stumbled his way into a promotion that I don't think he's equipped to handle. And the ghoul has more questions than answers. I'm surprised he didn't make a bigger thing of it. I can't end this review without talking about the music. While it's great that they used a lot of the music from Galaxy News Radio and other stations in-game, I really feel like they overused them. Some sections had three songs in three minutes. And we're not just talking about scenes where someone in the vault was listening to a record player. We're talking about non-diegetic music, the kind the characters can't hear. Sometimes the music suits the footage. Sometimes it just feels like a song put in because they had no dialogue. It was good, but way too much of it. There were some nice renditions of Enon Zur's Fallout theme, at times changed in ways that made it almost seem like another piece. Maybe season two will answer all of our questions. The show seems to be doing well numbers wise and getting the typical spread of zeros and tens. Again, I'm giving it a seven out of 10. I'm not sure how you make a Fallout show, seeing as the game is basically a sandbox, but I don't think that changing the lore is really the best idea, as it makes the show feel more separate from the games. Thankfully, we avoided most of the common woke tropes that have been infecting modern media. Sure, we have a female main character and a black secondary character, but the games let you pick your race and gender, so it's totally adherent to the games. We do get a couple of mixed race relationships, but it seems like in this timeline or time period, race is no longer a thing that people discuss. It's more the content of your character than the color of your skin. There is a non-binary actor who plays a character that is never addressed by a pronoun. They're way off on the periphery though. You do get a female villain who turns out has a heart of gold. So all of her previous atrocities such as encouraging sex through deception, 
I'm sure that will be discussed. All of her previous atrocities are overlooked. The villain with the heart of gold. I did say in my preview video that having a white male overseer wasn't going to end well. And I guess you could say I was right, but they have a black female overseer and it's just as bad. What kind of impact will the show have on the games? I think it showed a lot more of the day-to-day -day operations of the Brotherhood. And they seem to have a hard-on for Power Armor, Vertibirds, and Blimps. So my prediction is that Fallout 5 is going to be about a Brotherhood initiate working their way up to Knight. You can have all the building of bases that they love so much, Colony Sim style. Let's get into a quick spoiler section. What factions are present? I can say that the Brotherhood is present, as is the Enclave, NCR, Raiders, Fiends, Vault Tech, Robco, Repcon, West Tech, Big MT, some more prominent than others. Is there a Death Claw? There's a Death Claw skull. Super Mutants? No. Red Scorpions? No. Is there Vats? No. Not unless you count slow motion during an action scene as Vats. There's no scene of someone with a pip boy targeting a specific limb. Is that dog meat? The dog is not named dog meat, but is referred to in second person as dog meat. Do they break the fourth wall? No, unless you count having the terrible writer on the movie set being named Emil. Is the violence handled well? Not really. It seems like the ultra gore is for funny slapstick moments and then when there's a plot related battle, people just get shot or thrown across the room. No exploding heads then. Any surprise cameos? I was surprised to see Matt Berry as the voice of the Mr. Handys. Will there be a second season? There has to be. Very few plot points were solved satisfactorily. Imagine your quest was to find your shoe. But the quest ends with you finding the shoe with a bite taken out of it. But you don't own a dog. Would you call that a satisfying ending? No. Anyway, that's enough of that. Be sure to subscribe to check out my weekly episode reviews. Also check out my Shogun reviews over here. Now that's some 10 out of 10 television. Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, please consider subscribing. I release reviews occasionally when time allows, and a thumbs up would be a big motivator for further reviews. If you didn't like it, feel free to leave a thumbs down and let me know how I can improve in the comments below. Anyway, I'm Mixie, thanks for your time, and have a good one.